The New Year's honours list has been revealed, and I think they have all been granted at this point, haven't they, from the 1st of January? I hope so. I believe so, yes. And uh, there were a few controversial additions to it this year. Number one being Sir Tony Blair. That's oh, right. On, no. We don't have to call him Sir until it's happened, at least, surely. I'm pretty sure it's already happened at uh... this point, but yes... Uh, so, uh, Sir Tony Blair has been knighted, uh, but already there has been some controversy surrounding the decision, unsurprisingly, including a petition to remove his honours already, which this article from GB News has said has reached 220,000 signatures. I believe at the moment it's gone up to already to 400,000 signatures or Based. something of the like. Um, but let's take a look through here. So petition started on New Year's Day to remove Tony Blair's knighthood has now reached over 250,000 signatures. The petition organiser, Angus Scott, wrote, Tony Blair is to be knighted with the highest possible ranking in the New Year honours list, Buckingham Palace has said. So Tony, who held the keys to number 10 between 1997 and 2007, which I believe made him the number one longest serving Labour Prime Minister with 10 years will be appointed a knight companion of the most noble order of the garter the oldest and most senior British order of chivalry they give an order of the garter too yes that's the, on top of the knighthood that's the position they've granted him yes right I, I can see the chat already is just like boo hiss good <laughs> good as you should be he's behind you I don't know oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Blair caused irreparable damage. Actually, to be fair, he is quite ghoulish nowadays, isn't he? God, so, imagine him creeping up on you. Oh, God, no, I don't <laughs> want to. Uh, rumbling, tumbling, get on it. Tony Blair caused irreparable damage to both the Constitution of the United Kingdom and to the very fabric of the nation's uh, society. He was personally responsible for causing the death of countless innocent civilian lives and servicemen in various conflicts. For this alone, he should be held accountable for war crimes. Tony Blair is the least deserving person of any public honour, particularly anything awarded by by Her Majesty the Queen, and we petitioned the Prime Minister to, pe uh, to petition Her Majesty to have this honour removed. One signatory wrote, Tony Blair should be prosecuted, not knighted. Someone like this being honoured shows how corrupt and vile the system is. Pretty based. The appointment was made by the Queen in her New Year's honours list. Knighting the Prime Ministers is not uncommon with Sir John Major, Sir Tony's direct predecessor, the last to have the honour bestowed to him. Common Speaker Sir Lindsay Hoyle has said that he thinks every former Prime Minister should receive the honour from the Queen, Whatever people might think, it is one of the toughest jobs in the world, and I think it is respectful and the right thing to do. No. Whether it's Tony Blair or to David Cameron, they should all be offered the knighthood when they finish as Prime Minister. No. Just no. Why would you do this? It's not, you don't just get a pat on the back for doing the job. But also, who are you? You're the Prime Minister of the House of Commons. You're, not You're meant to be a commoner. Like, I understand that, you know, some Prime Ministers, sort of like Winston Churchill, should obviously be levelled with immense... You know, of course, or whatever. But if you want to remain yourself in a position of commons, I don't feel like you should be having every other title under the sun thrown at you. Yeah, especially when it's a position that you you're not a volunteer no. as prime minister. You've got quite a lot of cash. Yeah, you're getting paid for it, and I believe that Tony Blair, in and of himself, is quite a wealthy man. So he doesn't need this pat on the back. I'm sure he's already pulled his shoulder patting himself of, on the back over Showing the years. himself and blood money. Or... Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> and just a reminder as well, if we go over here, we've got the Wikipedia link, that uh, Tony Blair's knighthood, the uh, late being a uh, most noble order of the garter, is the highest honour that can be bestowed upon you in, in Britain. And it says, uh, just to give an idea, it's the world's oldest national order of knighthood in continuous existence and the pinnacle of the British honours system after the Victoria Cross and George Cross. Its membership is extremely limited, consisting of the Sovereign, the Prince of Wales, both being, ex uh, both being members ex officio and gaining membership upon acceding to one of the titles, and not more than 24 full members or companions male members are known as knight's companion whilst female members are known as lady's companion i assume 24 alive because there have been yes i believe last. 24 alive if you scroll down you can see the current members john and uh, you can see if we go down tony blair is the most recent addition being made in this year oh wait no baroness amos as well former cabinet minister but yeah tony blair is one of the most recent that's been done over the past few days and uh, he's among some pretty uh high status company by the looks of it i mean uh, this puts him basically on par with the queen 
well, in, no, terms of, in, ter- in terms of honours. <laughs> sure, sure. In terms he's, of honours, honor. which I do not believe that he is, is justified whatsoever. Uh, but if we move along, we can also see the petition itself. So you can see, yeah, 382,000 right now. Oh, wait. Oh, four. It's going up. Yep, it keeps going up. And that was uh, probably like, what, 15 minutes ago? It's gone up in like 30,000 already. It's ticking up in real time, actually. Yep, uh, at 500,000 signatures, this petition becomes one of the top signed in change.org. So you can check the links below to, if you would like to add your name to the <laughs> signatures right there. If you think this human goblin, as he has <laughs> yeah. pictures, uh, does not deserve a knighthood, well... I couldn't agree more. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is if you um, type in Tony Blair's name on change.org, there's a number of petitions like this. Obviously, this is the most popular one, but there's just a few that are just arrest Tony Blair, and one that was literally just F off Tony Blair. They try him in the Hague for war crimes, Tony Blair? Is, is that one up there yet? Not, not yet. I mean, oh, arrest probably sorry. implies it, but yeah, uh, I do find it funny that about 400 people had signed the F off Tony Blair just so we can have an official <laughs> official from the House of Commons. Just go away, F you off. Know, you know what's annoying, though, is they, uh, if they had done this as, a, as an official petition on the government website, if you get 100,000, they do actually have to have it as a debate in Parliament. <laughs> I'd love to see that debate in Parliament. Just should Tony Blair F off? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just that as the title. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but yeah, and uh, you can s- scroll along here. This is why I think that he's already been knighted. No, if you if you go to the next link, John. Yeah, it says on the government website now, the Right Honourable Tony Blair. I oh, know that's because he's an MP, I believe. Oh, okay. Fair, fair play. Well, I don't know if he's been knighted or not. I believe he might have already. But yeah, he's the. It's, it basically goes through his history. The longest serving Labour Prime Minister oversaw the Northern Irish peace process. Goes over some of his major acts and positives. But even in the biography, they do have to start pointing out near the bottom. He made some questionable decisions that weren't the most popular with everybody. We have to admit that, but overall it's relatively positive. But we don't want to be thinking of Tony Blair as a mostly positive prime minister. Mostly peaceful prime minister. Yes, a mostly peaceful prime minister. So let's go over a few of the things that he did. Obviously the most uh, well-known and important was his involvement in the Afghan and Iraq war led by, well, led into it by George W. Bush and weapons of mass destruction, which never materialized anywhere but if we move along we can also see the other effects that he's had on the uk i think we've used this particular graph a few times but it's just quite uh striking if you scroll down you can see net immigration to the uk over time around 1997 there's a bit of an uptick isn't there that just stays there forever. yeah that and never goes away and i think obviously this is also showing a big failing of our current conservative government that they've not brought it down in the slightest but Tony Blair's government was the one that opened the floodgates to the current mass immigration that we're experiencing in the UK. So thanks for that one, Tony. And if we go along as well to the next link, uh, there was the uh, issue of him passing, well, his government passing just so many laws to the point where it averages out to seven laws a day. So if I go through this, Tony Blair's... That that includes the days when they're not sitting... As yeah, well. exactly. They just just, let, just pass in their spare time. Oh, I might just pass a few laws today. Well, no, I mean, like, they're passing so many in the days that they're even in the chamber. They ha- even when you add the days that they're all out of the chamber, you end up with seven a day. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But Tony Blair's 10 years as Prime Minister have been marked by a dramatic jump in the volume of new laws, according to research over the course of the last decade. Each year has seen an average of 2,685 new laws, the equivalent of almost seven and a half a day, or one every three and a quarter hours. Hours. That's how you run a sensible government. That's that's how governance should work. Yes, exactly. Every three that's... three and a quarter hours. There's a new law, governor. <laughs> I mean, that's not the rule of law. That's just ruling more laws constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a 22 percent increase over the average 2,196 2, annually over the previous 10 years between 1987 and 96. That's still pretty high, if I'm honest. But it's it's gone up, and the total does not even include thousands of laws introduced into UK into the UK under European Union regulations over the decade. The flood of legislation has been marked by an increase in the use of statutory instruments rather than act of parliaments to introduce new laws, said Sweet and Maxwell. I think this article is obviously a little bit old now, but some 98% of the new laws in the Blair decade were introduced by statutory instrument, a procedure which allows less time for debate in parliament and potentially less thorough scrutiny than the tabling of a bill. 
So they're just trying to pass them out as quickly as possible, get them through the system without I being mean, really questioned. This is another one number of the uh, charges against Tony Blair that will be on the books when he's finally arrested. Yes, hopefully. Critics of Blair's but government... It, sorry, but oh, like, yeah, this, this is someone who does not respect our political system. No, absolutely not. Uh, having been reading a bit on political theory, recent, uh, well, legal theory, the, one of the marks of like the rule of law is that the citizenship should be reason, uh, able to make reasonable inference of what the law is before they're charged with it. But when you have seven new laws being passed the day under legislation where they're trying to skirt past the official procedures to make sure that you know we're not just passing frivolous laws, how is anybody supposed to be completely aware of whether they may be breaking a law just by crossing the road at the wrong time of day or something. Like, my understanding is even lawyers at the time had this as a bit of a joke, that they even couldn't understand what was going on. I mean, never mind the average citizen. Yeah, I mean, the red tape that it piles up on every every little interaction that you might be doing in your everyday life is ridiculous. Yeah. But, so, but, I mean, it, sa it says here, meanwhile, the statutes themselves have become longer with five acts passed in 2006, totaling more than 100 pages, three more than 200, one more than 300, one more than 500, and one more than 700. That's getting up to build back better levels right there. I forget who said it, but there was possibly Winston Churchill who said, uh, the right and sir, honor uh, honorable sir, blah -de blah has made this law criticism proof sheer, by the sheer length of it. Meaning that no one's just gonna, no one's going to read it when you get handed a 700 page document saying this is what the new laws are gonna be. You're gonna go, well, I don't know. You're voting on it in two hours. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, I'll just give it a bit of a skim then. Uh, so, yeah, once again, the deluge of laws that we have to wade through is absolutely on Blair's back. And one of the laws that he, his government introduced, obviously we can't directly blame him for it, but obviously it was one of the laws passed in this seven-a-day period, was the Communications Act 2003, which has Section 127 in it, which Callum in particular is very familiar with. I'm sure we're all very familiar with at this point. So this is decriminalization of jokes in this country, which is why this country is an international embarrassment on free speech. Yes, and let's not also forget Blair's recent contributions to public discussion. If we move along, you can see Tony Blair says that Brits refusing COVID vaccines are idiots. Tony Blair's who said that Brits who refuse to get vaccinated are not just irresponsible, but idiots. The former prime minister said getting vaccinated is not only in the interests of the individual, but also in the interests of the broader public. Sorry if I'm not going to trust your opinion on anything, Tony. I'm not commenting on any of the Vax stuff because we're on YouTube, uh, but this does not sound like somebody who respects the tradition of British liberties, shall we say. And uh, this has been pointed out by other people. If we move along, you can see on Twitter here, Chris Rose, uh, who's a good guy, says, I do view Tony Blair as the Mrs. Brown boys of the UK politics, as in I'm sure people who still like him exist, but I'm yet to meet them in real life, which checks out. To be honest, because if we move along again, you can see there's a YouGov poll where they track the popularity and recognize uh, and fame of certain public figures. You can see that he's liked a shocking amount by 22% of people who answer, but disliked by 57% of all respondents. So, yeah, it doesn't seem to be that much of a popular opinion to think that Tony Blair was a did a great job. I think that YouGov poll did actually include the bad man, and uh, Tony Blair has a lower like rating <laughs> than the bad man. The bad man is officially more popular than Tony Blair. Yes, win right there, based. And if we move along, there is some people, though, who are a little bit more forgiving on this, who are a little bit uh, less harsh than we would be, shall we say. For instance, shocking to me, Julia Hartley Brewer from Talk Radio, who's typically one for good takes on a lot of subjects, says that she thinks the honor system is a total joke in the 21st century and has always been corrupt. But if a man who was elected three times to be our nation's prime minister isn't entitled to a knighthood, then who the hell is? That's the similar sort of argumentation to the, uh, to what was his name? Uh, Lord Hoyle or whatever it was. Yeah, Sir Lindsay Hoyle basically just saying, oh, well, they were prime minister, so we might as well just give it to them. And uh, it's not really a take I agree with. No. No, a at all. Uh, just because you're elected three times and are popular at the time does not mean that you should be knighted. Knighthoods, generally speaking, are granted retrospectively. You know, which Hitler gives you was the elected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, there's this thing called the benefit of hindsight where we can look back on what they ended up doing and its consequences and effects. Uh, yeah, you can see John right there. Hindsight, he planted the seed of destruction of the entire nation. Great point, John. Uh, and if we move along, so that was surprising from Julia, unsurprisingly from Tom Harwood, Sir Tony probably deserves it, to be honest. You can't wait to call him Sir Tony, can you? 
Yeah, absolutely cannot. Tom, what are you doing? Uh, I mean, the sad thing is with Tom Harwood, as much as we we criticize him and uh, make fun of him, I do think that his... Uh, but the actions of the Conservative Party lead me to believe that the Tom Harwoods of the world might be the majority conservative opinion within the party, or it might be reflective of it on a certain level, which is quite depressing to think. Would you not agree? I don't know. I mean, the ones I've met have all been pretty based, but they're all local people, aren't they? Well, yeah, they're the ones who will actually interact with us, whereas Boris Johnson, for instance, I think probably errs more on the Harwood side of the spectrum, shall we say find out yeah but and then if we move along there's other people just saying oh the blair government was the best government of my lifetime thank you uh, what is obviously a tony blair alt account (laughs) 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 if we uh, we can see a few Mm. more of these if you scoot along so blair government was the best government of my lifetime and by far and i'm very old and very senile presumably uh move along somebody put out a reminder for those dissing tony blair today he did the good day good Friday agreement restored devolved government to the Northern Ireland no, devolved boo. power to the Scottish Parliament boo. and the Welsh Assembly are Hiss. these good things <laughs> this is crap <laughs> this is just more more ammunition for me to diss him with and introduce the Equality and Human Rights Commission boo uh, great wonderful okay so this is the guy who destroyed the UK as an institution and instead made it a hashmash of random federated sort of countries I don't even know what to call it it's a, it's a huge mesh devolved nonsense yeah. but then also okay so he, he's the guy who brings in the fact that we had that huge debate about whether or not prisoners should have the right to vote uh, the answer is new yes no <laughs> they've given up their civil liberties by breaking the law and being convicted guilty in a court of the in the court of their jury they can vote uh, when they're out. that's it there yeah there you go uh, but there's also stuff in here i can't see it but there's a mention of like oh uh, record levels of students in higher education which I assume means university. Yeah, so he That's was not a good thing. No, he he was the the moron who decided that it would be a goal to put fifty percent of all people through university, and therefore naturally they would all get useful degrees and become useful to society. Uh, no, look where that's got us, Tony. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and then if we move along again, you can see we've got uh, the high honors list again. Oh, if you next link, uh, there's a few other interesting uh, additions to this, including. I suppose now he'll be Sir Chris Whitty and Lady Jenny Harries, both members of the Sage Commission, who have done such a great job for the UK over the past two years. Uh, But before we go into that, just as a, a heads up for people, here's what the government website says. If you move along again, uh, you need to get an honour. If you want to scroll down, it'll say somewhere down there. So, But here's here's the list of attributes they're looking for if you want to be knighted in the UK. So if I was to nominate you, what I need? Yes, exactly. Making a difference in, to the community or field of work. Well, he certainly, he certainly <laughs> made a difference to the community. I mean, destroying communities is making a difference, I suppose. Uh, not a positive difference, but okay. All right, ticking that box. All right. <laughs> Enhancing Britain's reputation. <laughs> oh, oh it's, maybe it's, not. It's been enhanced <laughs> again. Long-term voluntary service. Once again, he wasn't no. voluntary. He was paid to do it. Innovation and entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship. Well, it's, it's supposed technically he volunteered for the position in the sense yes. of you volunteered for the army. And then he was paid handsomely for it. Yeah, but if you're in the army, you get paid, I suppose. Yep. I, I'm, so, I'm sort of going like steel manning, like pulling at strings here, I know. Yes, you're, <laughs> you're pulling at threads, yeah. I thought I'd try. Changing things with an emphasis on achievement. Once <laughs> Again, he certainly changed things. Improving life for people less able to help themselves. I mean, they tried. Okay. Wait, ha- hang on. Wait, wait, okay, so the rest of these, I mean, we're sort of memeing. Like, sure, he changed things. Okay, tick in the box. Improving life for people less able to help themselves. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously not. And displaying moral courage. That's what you call chaotic evil. I, mean, <laughs> I, was, yeah, I was gonna say blind stupidity could be dis, uh, yeah. mistaken for courage. So, you know. Uh, so those are the uh, attributes needed to get an honour. Uh, and then as we move along, as I've mentioned, Chris Whitty is getting an honour. Does he demonstrate these virtuous qualities of enhancing Britain's reputation, innovation and entrepreneurship? Mm, I I wouldn't say so, uh, but this is just the reminder that he is one of the chief, he's the chief medical officer and one of the higher ups in Sage who have been obviously dealing with the COVID response over the past two years and doing such a spectacular job of it. They are in fact responsible for the modelling that Britain's been 
basing its responses off. If we move along, we can see Spectator have consistently been doing a tracker on this that we've used a few times. Yeah. We do to keep using it because it's important, which yes. is the fact that... Well, it just completely demonstrates that all of their projections have been wrong every single time. And not just a little bit wrong, spectacularly wrong. Excellent display of moral courage there, Chris, to be so spectacularly wrong publicly so many times. Congratulations, here's your knighthood. Uh, and then if we move along again, we can see another of Witty's achievements that children under his under his watch, children with learning disabilities, including autism, were offered do not resuscitate orders as part of the COVID strategy. And this is the tip of the iceberg that we and the others have been uh, have been reporting. So, I mean, it, it almost sounds like there should be a medieval nursery rhyme about him. <laughs> like, you know, the child murderer, oh, sir, witty, or something like that, you know? <laughs> uh, but this is certainly a display of improving life for people less able to help themselves. <laughs> Surely. I help the parents by disposing of their child's corpse. <laughs> yes, he, he certainly changed things with an emphasis on achievement. We uh, achieved record mortality rates. No, I don't know if we did aut that. Autism has fallen in the country. Yeah, how do you do it, Chris? Yeah. Uh, and then, once again, Jenny Harry's got an honour as well. If we move along, we covered this a few, I think it was last week, talking about how she was in charge of the dodgy data used to push for tighter COVID restrictions. One of Britain's most senior health advisors has been accused of disseminating dodgy data that inflated the potential risk of Omicron. Dr. Jenny Harris, the chief executive of the UK Security Agency, is understood to have been the source of the, a contested claim by Sajid Javid, the health secretary, that there is a typically 17-day lag between patients becoming infected and requiring hospitalization. However, independent experts pointed to the Office for National Statistics data, which suggested an average delay of nine or 10 days. So these are the people advising our politicians. These are the people getting uh giving the advice to them and where the where people like Sajid Javid keep pulling these random figures and dates and numbers out of their back pocket from and the queen and the government have just decided yeah great job good job here's your knighthood so I, I do think that this is more of a dishonors list and I feel bad for anybody who has to be knighted alongside this uh, deluge of failures that we see before them I mean next they're probably going to be offering one for Susan Mitchy. <laughs> and uh, services to the uh, to her comrades lady communist <laughs> yes exactly all the notable knighthoods uh, just to throw a few out there uh, also include actors like joanna lumley and daniel craig and if i were them i'd ask if i could just be held off till next year yeah yeah so uh, that's just all of that information i've got there looking into that so yeah um we're a very serious country i promise <laughs> If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this epochs that Carl and Bo did together on Saturnalia and the history of Christmas. But if you'd like to find out what else is coming out on the website, you can always follow us on getter.com with lotuseaters underscore com being the at. Thank you and goodbye.